New Centurion. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of That New Toy Smell. I'm Pixel Dan. I'm Prince Randor. Or Scotty Cash. <laughs> Scotty Cash, Prince Randor, they're kind of the same thing. Maybe that's what I've been off doing. I've been being Prince Randor. Yeah, where have you been? Hiding. Uh, hiding? Yeah. You have, you've been around more than Duvall, though. I don't yeah. think we've seen Duvall Maybe in like... Maybe he's hiding better like, than me. Like, eight years. Eight years. How long has it been since we've seen Duvall on, on, on a video? It's a little bit, it's like seven and a half years. Seven and a half years. It's a little ridiculous. I'm exaggerating. Eight, eight exaggerating a little yeah. bit with that eight years thing. So what's going on, guys? Uh, we've got a lot of great stuff today. Uh, we're going to have a video review of the 1991 release of the Uncanny X-Men, uh, which to me is one of my favorite toy lines just because it introduced me to X-Men and comic books in general. So... But before we get into that video today, we wanted to discuss a little bit of this week's Hot Toy News, uh, which I wanted to talk about Shocker Toys' announcement that they have started taking pre-orders for Series 2 of the Indie Spotlight figures. That is a correct statement. Now, we've looked at the Indie Spotlight uh, stuff before. You actually did a review of uh, the Scud, Scud figure, which is a really, really cool toy. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that yet, you can always check that out on the site at thatnewtoysmail.com. Uh, lots of toy reviews there all the time. Scotty reviewed the Scud figure. Uh, and Wave 2 is getting ready to come out here. They've got pre-orders up at ShockerToys.com now. I think they come out later this year. And this is actually a really cool wave. There's a lot of figures... Later and, this year? Or? This It's quarter four, so it's okay. supposed to be the right. end of this year. So I'd assume they're expecting them in December sometime. Yep. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, but I know this is a wave that you're excited for. For a couple of reasons. For a couple of reasons. <clears throat> well, the, the thing I most like about the whole Indie Spotlight is there's going to be characters in there that you don't know. I had no idea who Scud was <laughs> until, and, you, until, until he handed it. it to me. Right. And I was just like, what is this? And then I read the story and it was, it was excellent. Right. So I can't wait to, to get some of these guys and check out their stories, you know, because he, Jeff at Shocker Toys knows what he's doing. But, yes, uh, I cannot wait for Colored Dick Tracy and the Tick. That's right. Dick Tracy and the Tick. Those are, I think, the two going to be the most popular characters in this wave because of the figures in this wave, they're definitely the most recognizable. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm like you, and I, I don't, I've never really been big into a lot of the indie comics, so I don't know a lot of those characters. Uh, but when I take a look at this and I see the Tick, I'm like, yeah, heck yeah, the Tick. Yeah, definitely. You know, I remember the cartoon series from when we were kids, and I know that he's been in a comic book character too. And Dick Tracy, of course. I mean, who doesn't know Dick Tracy? And there's not so. a lot of, I mean, you had your old Dick Tracy toys from right. a movie. Right. You know, I don't know, what was that, 95? The, maybe, yeah. You know, the back old, in the day. The Hasbro but, stuff, I think. I mean, these are posable. They're just excellent. They look perfect. Right. And, the, yeah, these are much more posable. The, you know, they fit more with today's standards for action figures, so... It's, it really is a great series to collect, especially if you're a fan of indie comics. Or if you're guys like us, I mean, this is a great introduction to the stories of these characters just by checking out these figures. But the best part... We're going to ruin it? Or you no, know? yeah, go ahead. The best part is if you get all of the figures from Series 2 and you mail in the, uh, the, well, the UPCs, UPCs. Uh -huh. you get Arthur from the Tick series. That's the only way to get Arthur is if you get all of the figures. Yep, they're doing a mail-away figure. So. so he handcuffs you into getting <laughs> Arthur, but I guarantee it's going to be worth it. Definitely, definitely. It also says that uh, each figure in the Tick series includes an accessory from the Tick's world. So this whole wave is very Tick-oriented, it Good. seems. I don't know exactly what the accessory well, is. Well, that's kind of how it was with la Series 1 with Max. Oh, that's right, that's right. What I remember that. called? the little The little black guy that came with uh, Scud. I can't remember. I, yeah. It mix, mix, it mix. I don't know. We'll be here all Somebody day. will tell us, I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you get a piece from the Tick's world, and then if you buy them all, you send in the UPCs, 
you get an Arthur figure to go along with it. So that's really exciting, that's awesome. especially for Tick fans out I there. I want, so. uh, what is it? Was it Booger Tick or, or Snot Tick? Mucus oh, Tick. Yeah, what you, the, the clear tick. green one? Yeah. <laughs> I remember awesome. that. I remember that. They they had a figure of that. They need to release a variant. <laughs> Get on the phone with Shocker Toys. Let them know. Uh, yeah. Call them. <laughs> so, yeah, if this is something that you guys are interested in, I would definitely head over to ShockerToys.com. They're taking pre-orders for the Wave right now. I think you can order them individually or together as the full set. Um, but if you're a fan of the Tick and you want to get that Arthur, I would definitely recommend go ahead and pre-ordering that whole Wave because... I, I guarantee that some of these more popular characters like Dick Tracy and Tick are going to sell out a lot oh, faster, sure. and if you miss out, you probably will miss out. Well, I mean, then you have to go on eBay and get them for like triple the price. Yeah, so... What? I would... It just got a lot brighter in here. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Dick Tracy, Dick Tracy! <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, ShockerToys.com, you guys should definitely check that out. Uh, order those figures and tell them that new toy smell sent you. I'm sure they'll, they'll well, like yeah, to hear that. We should actually be having some, uh, some of these for review. some reviews here pretty quick. We'll definitely quick. have some reviews up on the site, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so that's going to go ahead and do it. That's all the toy news I really wanted to discuss today. Uh, if you guys want to hear more of the latest toy news, you can always check us out every Wednesday on the It Figures podcast. Always toy and action figure news and just you know general thoughts, stuff like that. We have a good time. So Sometimes we tell stories about random boots. Sometimes we do tell stories about random Our boots. Our guy, Killing. <laughs> Killen loves his story time. So the site, always have that up every Wednesday, thatnewtoysmill.com, and it's always available on iTunes. So if you guys use iTunes, do a search for It Figures, you should find us. So that's going to bring us to today's toy review. Indeed. We're going to go ahead. This is actually uh, one of my reviews. I wanted to take a look at this series of X-Men figures that was pretty uh, pretty uh, dear to my heart. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it got me, got me started on collecting Marvel figures. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the video review for today. For many years, the superheroes of the Marvel Universe have been found on the pegs of toy aisles. Even today, they remain to be some of the most popular toy lines to both collectors and kids alike. But before there were Marvel Legends and the 3 and 3 quarter inch Marvel Universe figures, there was a toy line that assisted in introducing many children to one of the most popular teams in comic book history. And that line was Toy Biz's Uncanny X-Men. Toy Biz's X-Men toy line hit store shelves in 1991. I immediately found myself drawn to these figures upon seeing them in the store. Since these figures were released before their hit cartoon series, this is how I really learned of the X-Men. In fact, these figures are what got me to start buying comic books in the first place. Once seeing the toys, I had to learn all about the X-Men. The initial wave included nine figures, two play sets, and two vehicles. And that is where we're going to focus on today. The original series that kicked off a hugely successful line of action figures that would last for many years to come. The first wave of figures included nine characters, six members of the X-Men, and three villains. The designs of the figures were all based off of the costumes the characters were currently seen wearing in the comics at the time. While the actual sculpt on these figures wasn't exactly the best, especially by today's standards, at the time they were really just fun toys. So let's take a look at each figure on an individual level. We'll kick things off with the very first X-Men figure I ever owned, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler included a sword and had a really cool poseable tail. Now the one thing I have always found awkward about this figure are the suction cups. He included one on his left hand and another on his right knee. Of course, this was meant so you could recreate his climbing abilities. The only problem was that the suction cups weren't that good, and distracted from the overall look of the figure. Still, I hold a special place for this figure, as he was the first Marvel figure I ever owned. Cyclops was released wearing his X-Factor uniform, complete with the classic skull cap covering his hair. He had a switch on his back that, when pressed, enabled a light-up feature 
to simulate his optic blast. This light had a tendency to burn out rather quickly on a lot of figures, and there is no way to change the battery once it's dead. He also included this goofy looking accessory that supposedly is a Cerebro computer. I never liked it, so when I played with my figures, he just never used it. Colossus is made to be a little bigger than the rest of the team, so it's cool to see Toy Biz attempting to fit the figures to scale. The biggest problem with this figure was that his hands were stuck in a lifting position. He came with a barbell, and a switch on his back made him lift it. <laughs> I guess since he's a strong character, they assumed that naturally his action feature should be him pumping iron. Although, I guess the feature is also good for recreating the fastball special. Wolverine was the one figure that took me forever to find as a kid. So stumbling upon him at the toy store was an exciting day for me. Wolverine instantly became one of my favorite characters. The figure features a removable mask, but it's a bit funny looking. That's because it's supposed to double as a ring. <laughs> I always preferred him maskless anyway. The figure is much shorter than the rest, again showing that Toy Biz attempted to keep the characters in scale with how they appeared in the comic books. He also featured retractable claws. His arms had no elbow articulation because of this. The claws popped out and retracted, very similar to the lightsabers on the classic Star Wars toys. Archangel came in his blue and pink costume. The wings on the figure had the ability to flap when pressing a button on his back. They also featured tiny missiles in the corner of each wing. The missiles didn't really fire though. The best you could do is flick them out with your finger. Storm was the only female figure released in this initial wave. Toy companies always had a hard time with releasing females because the boys that the toys were marketed to had little interest in adding a girl to their collection. Apparently, that's how I felt, since Storm is the only figure I do not have for this set. She featured an all black costume without her cape and had a lightning bolt on her chest that lit up in a similar fashion to the Cyclops Optic Blast. Juggernaut was a decent looking figure, as long as you looked at him from the front. For some reason, he was just really flat. You can tell while looking at him from the side just how flat he is. He also included wheels on his feet and a battering ram that you could set on his chest. I never really understood the point of either. I mean, he doesn't need a battering ram since he is a human battering ram and the wheels just seemed goofy to me. Apocalypse was a tad too skinny for the character, but still a cool figure to have in the initial assortment. He has the ability to grow by stretching out his legs and his abdomen. Then there's Magneto, the arch enemy of the X-Men. The figure included a tiny cloth cape, which unfortunately I lost years ago. He also featured a removable helmet and three pieces of space junk. The cool thing about this figure is that his action feature actually fits with his power. He has small magnets in his chest and his hands. Small pieces of metal on the space junk allow him to magnetically hold on to them. The Danger Room playsets released were actually pretty neat. Wolverine's Combat Cave had a place to stand the figure and featured a small joystick to control him. Using the joystick, you could have Wolverine battle it out with a training robot, slice through a Magneto stand-up, 
or even knock down a brick wall. The Light Force Arena for Cyclops was even cooler. You could plug Cyclops into the stand featured on the playset. By pressing his optic blast button on his back, it hits a switch that triggers various activities. Depending on where you're aiming Cyclops, you could blast down a wall of bricks, explode a cinder block, or even blast Magneto. It's actually a really fun action feature. The initial wave did feature two vehicles, one for Wolverine and one for Magneto. Both were rather silly looking, really, and probably the one part of the initial line of toys that I would consider to be a low point. I can't say I ever recall seeing Magneto drive around in this ugly car. The Uncanny X-Men from 1991 obviously don't stand up to the action figures created today. But to me, they are still some of my all-time favorites for the simple fact that these were the toys that started my love for comics and toys based off of comics. They don't have the best sculpts or the best articulation, and they're chock full of hokey action features, but they will always remind me of all the fun I had while playing with them. Alright gang, welcome back to the show. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's video review. I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it? I enjoyed it. That's good. I had a lot of fun putting that I one together. I love the Magneto car. You love the, Magne yeah. <laughs> the you, Magneto you car? Yeah. You actually lied on that. I actually, I think it was Tuesday, I seen Magneto drive by in that car. Really? You said you've never you just, seen him. I, I've never seen him driving it before. Yeah, I was pulling out of uh, Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> and Magneto was just, just driving out with I was with giving thing. me a Team Jacob uh, card. Oh, oh he was good. He just like, Scotty, oh, kick, kick. And he waved. I said, Magneto! <laughs> good. Great. Scout's honor. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Like, the, the vehicles, they did that a lot in the 90s yeah. for toy lines. Like, uh, Dirt and I were just looking at the back of a Spider-Man box earlier, and it just had this goofy-looking Venom car that Venom was driving. And Actually, it's just, I seen Venom on Monday. You seen Venom driving his car? This is ironic. <laughs> like, the, the one thing, like, the, they kind of did the same thing with the figure on yep. this car. It's got magnets all over it, and it's got these weird little magnetic discs, and they stick, yeah, they just stick all over the car. Different spots. I don't know if it sticks. Oh, it does. There's a magnet on the front, too. See, I didn't even know that. And, like, if you've got, like, uh -oh. the space junk that came with them, like, if you want to stick that to there. I Get don't know. out of here. Like, it, it almost seems pointless, but Get out of here. it's got the magnetic stuff, and it, uh, it throws it, too. Woo! What'd you do? Uh, I put it here, and I pulled oh, the I switch, and I it see. flipped it out. Yeah, I don't know. The cars are kind of... Lame. Lame. I mean, even as a kid, I had absolutely no use for those. I did not want the vehicles. I don't, I, I've never seen this until the video. I Yeah, I got a good deal on it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have even had it for the video. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it came with my Danger Room play sets, So, But we, the, the, the play to, sets, on the other hand... We need to customize them. Make it like a He-Man car or something. I don't think He-Man would even fit on that thing. Man, he'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a new adventurous He-Man. Orko, dude. Put Orko, Orko in there. I do love the play sets. Yep. yep. I did, and I remember... When I was a kid, I wanted these, and for whatever reason, my mom wouldn't buy them for me. She's like, you don't need those. We'll take up space. You don't need them. So I didn't get them until recently when I was like, when I knew that I wanted to have all this stuff for the video, I was right. like, I got to get these now. And you remember that podcast where we were talking about them? Yep. I went, like, that's when I decided, I was like, I have to go get yep. those things. <laughs> I, I got this thing. So. I got the thing from Ventures on clearance for, yeah. like, dirt cheap back, yeah. back in the day. But, uh. I, I just, they're like. There's really not a whole lot you can do with them. I yeah, mean, they're kind of... Wolverine fights it. Yeah, they got the cool little joystick thing. Like, let me see. I'll get them on there. But I, I, they seem like they would run out of fun quickly. You know what I mean? Well, after you get bored with Wolverine, you just put on somebody else on there, and they can fight Oh, it. and they can fight. That's a good point. Huh? Huh? <laughs> but it doesn't work really well as a good, like, display piece or anything. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of neat. But... For, like, back in the day, though, that's not, I mean, it wasn't that bad. Like, if someone, yeah. if someone brought this out now, it, they'd be laughed off the toy room Yeah, floor. For, for sure. What for is sure. this? What is this? What do you do with it? Like, the action features, are, like, I love the joystick idea, and I, I love, like, 
It, it's not exactly the easiest thing to do, but like, yeah, you know, well, Wolverine fell out. Oh, you know what we could use these po for? Poking through the, the action features and stuff like that. That's a really cool little thing. We could also use these for bookends. So, well, uh, for bookends? Huh? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> that, all right. We found another use for them. I do like that one better, though, um, because I like... Oh, no! That, that wasn't supposed to happen. Oh. I like the whole thing where, like, no matter wh wherever you point this mm -hmm. is what makes it, is, is wherever you're pointing it is the thing that works. Like, I'm pointing at the magneto, and it makes it, oh. and you point it at the brick, and it oh. makes the brick explode. I just think that's a cool I didn't, feature. I've never, I didn't have this one. No? Yeah. That one would definitely be my favorite of the two. Maybe this one wasn't at Ventures on sale. So I didn't <laughs> get it. What's your favorite one of the figures? I know you had all these, too, when you were Colossus. Colossus, the Colossus is Colossus. my favorite figure anyway the colossus with weight lifting action heck yeah the colossus and the art angel were hard for me to find i know you said wolverine in the video was hard for you to find wolverine wolverine was the was the one i got first and there was a, a, a crap ton of them yeah so you must have been collecting them before me then before or yeah. after i don't know i just know that this wolverine figure right here was like one of my very first holy grails ever like I wanted this figure so bad when I was a kid, and I couldn't find him anywhere. So, anytime I went to any store, I frantically dug through all the X Men figures. I flipped, I flipped them everywhere, frantically, because I wanted this toy. It's the only toy I wanted. So the day I finally found it, it was a very happy day for me. <laughs> and that's really funny too, because you look back at these guys now, and you're just like, it's funny how I got so excited for this when I was when I was younger. But I don't know that Wolverine. <laughs> there you go. Can broke, I have this? You broke the wall. No, that's that's fine. I need another book in. <laughs> and the Nightcrawler was the first, the One first Marvel bought. figure I ever had. This is the very first Marvel figure I ever owned, right here, and I still have it. So it's another, it's another special one for me. I'm probably, I, I probably still have my Wolverine. There's no way I have the the mask. Oh yeah, no I way. was really surprised I had it. And and the the crappy thing about the mask is it, it's so stretched out that yeah. like it doesn't stay on his face well well a lot of kids didn't wear their mask to school on their finger dan what why why not i'm just saying uh, it's the cool thing to do i had no idea i, I went to school and i was like bam i'm like wolverine's number one fan oh uh, yeah and everybody was like you're the best pixel dan That's what they, <laughs> oh they called you pixel dan back then they did yeah i like, went to school like, people that wore like third grade fourth fourth grade they used to go wind water heart stuff like that yeah captain planet yeah <laughs> I got one of those too. That you did. <laughs> you didn't steal it by any chance, did you? Anyway. See, uh, yeah, the mask is so stretched where's out. Where's his so. missiles? Uh, I might have lost. Them and it also looked like the wings were white in the video. Yeah, that's actually a later release. This is the this is the one that I have. Then I mm -hmm. think because I, I I don't think I found the, the they with the white wings. they re released him with the gray wings, and I think they re released Colossus. Too. Yeah, different yep. box later on. Mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, that's actually the re-release. The the white-winged one actually belonged to Killin' Enterprises. I borrowed it for the video. So if you guys would like to buy your own X-Men figures, be sure to check out KillinEnterprises.com because we have them for sale. Make sure you put the email address up there. I, I will. Because the, then I look silly. KillinEnterprises.com. Definitely check it out. But yeah, that one is the later release. And I, I think I was like you. I think I had a hard time finding Archangel when I was a kid. Maybe and I finally like, found him when they re-released Maybe him. they were like, no one's going to want this. We only make like three. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can find and them anywhere. And Killen got one. <laughs> and Killen, Killen got one. He's like, when I grow up later on, I'm going to open a store and sell this. I better buy it. <laughs> when, he was, when he was like 10. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Storm is the only one I never had. You didn't call me or I would have brought her. Yeah, I didn't know you had her. Uh, my Storm's lightning bolt doesn't work. My yeah. Cyclops still works. Your Cyclops still yeah. works? Yeah, mine does too, but I've got two of them. One doesn't work and one does Which work. Which is shocking. Yeah. yeah, there was no way to put the fix the battery. Mm -mm. On they the, didn't on start the newer doing it until, Cyclops, yep. yeah, On the newer Cyclops, Let, they got a little, I think, a little thing on his back with a little screw, and you know, Storm. You, you yep. understand what I'm trying to Storm say. Storm and Cyclops were the only two that you weren't able to change the battery on. But as the line went on and got bigger, because there was like a Mister Sinister figure, and you can change the battery on him and all that good stuff. So. Mr. Sinister is awesome. You remember that? Yeah. Like, this line went on for years and years after this. I mean, this is probably one of the biggest Marvel lines ever. Bef and this was before, you know, Marvel Legends was out and all that stuff. Because this spawned so many different toy lines. Like, you know, we had just the Marvel the Marvel line that spawned off of this. 
and the X Factor line and all of that stuff. I mean, there was just so many of these to get. And of course, the X Men cartoon series started right after this, so that just made the toy sales go even higher. So I didn't it was kind of a big deal. I didn't do any research on this, but it seemed like these were always coming out. Anytime I went to Ventures, Kmart, there was no Walmart back back then. Not but here, yeah. Anytime I went there, there was always a new series of these. Always. There was always a new always. figure. <clears throat> you know, so, I mean, that was that was another thing that just kept people mm -hmm. collecting and collecting and collecting. I have a whole tote. And they made so seriously. many characters. Yep. And, like, obscure characters, and they just made everything. I had no idea who Warpath was until they made Warpath as the a figure, figure. And I yeah. fell in love with him. Well, I've got, I had several figures as a kid, because people would just buy me X-Men toys, you know, like, family members. Plus, they were like, he likes X-Men! $4.99. They were like, yeah, they were like five bucks. They were cheap. Five thirty-five with that. I just remember every Friday on my, time for my allowance, it was yeah. time to run to Toys R Us and buy a new X-Men figure. We've had this talk. <laughs> yep, yep, definitely we have. said deja vu. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. There you have it. It's definitely one of my favorite toy lines of all time and i know a lot of people out there probably also were collectors of this just like myself and just like scotty so you want to see something yeah i Watch do this. i want to see it cuckoo, cuckoo, ah! that's amazing uh that's real <laughs> Be careful. cyclops with real optic Be blast careful. action this is a variant <laughs> all right well let's go ahead and get into the fan corner of the show Alrighty. we've got a few uh questions that were posted on the that new toysmail.com forums so we go ahead and look at those and then we got a little bit of fan art we want to show you guys so let's start with we're gonna ask this question first this one was asked by zero hp on the boards and he asks uh, what item or items in your collection has gotten you into the most trouble with your significant other? Your girlfriend, your wife? Yep. If there's anything you've ever bought that you got in trouble for spending too much money on or anything like that? Eternia. Absolutely. Yeah. And then after I got ripped off from the guy on the, oh, the message board, yeah. um, I finally got my money back and she was like, look, this is a sign. You need not to spend this much money on, on a on a freaking toy. I got it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, especially once you get like that dead set on getting that item, you can't just stop. But you but my my argument was I sold some stuff, some toys to get the toy. So I, it wasn't any of her money. <laughs> no, it wasn't any bill money. It was it was like it was, a trade. It was your money. Yeah, that's right. It was, yeah, it right. was a trade. Right. <laughs> I uh I don't really think I have one of those stories crazy enough. Every every time a new poster comes I get the look too. I don't get in trouble. I don't have to sleep on the couch for a week. But yeah. every time I get another a new He-Man poster, <sighs> what do you what do you need that? What's for? that? What is that? <laughs> Where are we gonna put that? Yeah. Because now my you you got to see my basement now. Because I got like four or five since I think you've been over. There's really? Like, I don't even have room to sit. That, <laughs> well, that's like that's like my uh, my collection room right yes. now is so full of stuff. Yeah. I have nowhere to put it. I have nowhere to store it because the closet's overflowing. So like literally like I just keep stacking things up on the floor. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of gotten to a point now where anytime I buy random things like this, when it's not really part of my main collection, but I just buy a bunch of it and like I get a bunch of boxes from eBay, then I get the, what did you buy? Why, why do you need that stuff? Why not? And of course, my excuse now is always, it's for the show. It's for, for the, the show. show. See, I have the best excuse now. Yeah. It's just for the show. That's all. It's, it's okay. I need to start saying that for my poster. <laughs> there you go. For the <laughs> show. What do I want you to do? Why, why are they just sitting on the wall? <laughs> all right. Uh, Vinto at Arms, which is actually our friend Chris Vint of the Masters of the Universe Chronicles podcast, he asks, what's the one thing you have in your collection that others are very jealous of? I'm jealous of your Eternia. I'm jealous of my Eternia, too. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff uh, that my friends have. Um, uh, I know what I'm jealous of. Uh, Duvall's, I guess it's not a toy, but he has the original Secret of the Sword poster that I, I just yeah. can't bring myself to spend the 75 bucks on or whatever it is. Right, know? right, definitely. But, uh, I can't even think of anything in my collection that might make other people jealous. Well, you have... Well, I, I can. What? Well, actually, not right now. Because everybody else is caught up with your Masters of the Universe stuff. Oh, yeah. Any, any, that's any, a good call. Any day, you'll have Randor and Goddess. And, and then, then everybody have... will be jealous of that's me. right. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's really... I mean, I get a lot of that stuff in advance. So yeah. a lot of people are... <laughs> other than that, though, I mean... That's a big deal, though. It is a big deal. I guess. It's a big yeah, there you go. Everybody's jealous of Pixel Dan. <laughs> uh, Everybody's jealous see. of your Magneto car, too. The Magneto car is what makes everybody jealous. I've seen Killing Eye in it, so 
Killen, keep, keep an Killen's eye on it. going to steal it? Well, I'm not saying, I'm not saying right. that. A jerk. All right, one more question. Crash Murdoch asks, if price were no object, what is the one item you would love to add to your collection? I know that if I could just spend, and this is, it's funny because we keep going back to He-Man, but you remember the, the two of us are, that's our big main collections is He-Man stuff. So if I had. You can't say more one, so you, you, you pick your words. I have to say, I can't say more one. than one. It's hard, but I would have to say that if I had money to just spend on anything, I would probably spend it on like an inbox complete Eternia. That is, I would have to, because that's the one place that I've always wanted. It's the one place that I don't know if I'll ever own. I mean, it's. I would definitely buy that if I could. My, mine is incomplete. Um, so if I didn't have it, I'd probably pick. I'd probably say the same thing. But I super duper want a Titus. Titus, Titus, or Megator both. They're like seven to thou- seven hundred bucks to a thousand dollars for that. And it's crazy, just for one for one big figure. And oh man, but I would love to add that to my collection. It's it's one of those holy grails of the masters. I mean. There's so many of those. The last stuff that came out at the end of the line, it's so hard to get a hold of now. It's, it's ridiculous. It sucks. But yeah, that is definitely what I would spend my money on. You think that's a that's like a sign, like he's just going to send that stuff to us? Oh, they want this. They want this You stuff. would be my favorite person, Crash Murdoch. Second, second favorite <laughs> Second favorite person. person. If you just send us both an Eternia or like an Atitis and a Megator. <laughs> I'm sure he just has extra ones lying around. We'll just around. make you, like, super fan. You know, like, that new Toy Smell super fan. We'll give you, like, a badge and stuff that you can wear. It'll be awesome. Wow. I mean, See? you trade an Eternia and a Titus for a badge? A badge. Yeah. Why wouldn't you Why do wouldn't that? Why wouldn't you do it? Do it. We love it. <laughs> Next question. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead. That's going to wrap up questions. But what I do want to show off is some cool fan art that was sent in to us. Um... Is this is, now? Is this painted, drawn, or is this computer? Image? It looks like it's all computer, computer images, yep. right? It's still a great job. You can tell he took his time on it and everything. Definitely, the coloring, the coloring's beautiful. Joseph, Joseph sent this stuff into us. We're gonna throw it up on the screen now. Basically, all he did was just do some of his own renditions of the that new Toy Smell logo. But they are really cool looking logos, and there's a good chance we might be using these just because I like them that much. Should we get the written consent? Um, consent? He gave us consent to use good. them for whatever we want to use them for. So I want to give a huge thank you to Joseph for thank sending you, that Joseph. our way. These are awesome, and he did actually tell me that he's in the process of working on some cartoon drawings of all of us. Oh, yeah? And he's going to send that to us also. So once we get that, I'm definitely going to show that off too because I'm excited to see that. But we definitely want to thank Joseph for sending in that fan art. Guys, if any of you out there have fan art you want to send us or if you have questions you want to ask us, there's a couple different ways you can get it to us. First and foremost, head over to thatnewtoysmail.com and click on the forums. You will see a thread in there for show questions. You will also see a thread for fan art. Post away. We'll definitely use it here on the show. Or, or, uh, or if you'd rather use the email route, you can always send us an email at tntsadmin at gmail.com. I was going to say, or if they want to draw me a picture, I can sure fit it on my He-Man wall somewhere. Hey, draw Scotty I'm a cool He-Man picture. I'm always open. Actually, I talked to somebody on the board, and I can't remember. The guy that drew Mosquito for you. Who did that? Uh, I don't remember right now, and I apologize, but I don't remember his name. I, I talked to him. I have his email and everything. I think his name's... I won't even say it. I'll just embarrass myself. <laughs> um, but I talked to him. He said once he gets a couple things out of the way, he's going to draw me a uh, Battle Armor He-Man, Battle Armor Skeletor going at it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. See, and we love to see that kind of yeah, stuff. Definitely. So if you guys are good at fan art or any of that kind of stuff, artwork, drawing, yeah, send that to us. We would love to see it. And uh, before we wrap things off, just want to remind you guys, if you head over to VGLosers.com, you can always check out the latest podcast we have going. We have so many different podcasts we we're do. Running now. We are the podcast central. That's right. So you can always join Scotty for the MMA podcast, The Way In. Uh, you can join Dirt with the Wrestling Radio podcast. Uh, he's also got the new uh, what is it? What is it called? The uh, Panels to Paper podcast, or it's the new comic book podcast he ah. just started. It's up on the front page of the site now. And uh, your fantasy football fantasy podcast. Football. So all that great stuff is over there, as well as comic book reviews and, and everything. Um, and if you guys are looking for a great way to stock up your collection, to fit in some new toys, or video games, or DVDs, or comic books, or anything like that, make sure you check out our official store at KillinEnterprises.com. And, of course, you can always see new episodes of That New Toy Smell every Saturday, as well as toy reviews throughout the week at our home on the internet, thatnewtoysmell.com. And that's going to wrap up this Saturday's episode of the show. So until next week, guys, I'm Pixel Dan. Scotty Cash. We'll see you then.